The Ninja Turtles had plenty of imitators, trying to capture the hearts of children everywhere. There was Avenger Penguins, Road Rovers, Mummies Alive, the Mighty Ducks animated series, Moo Mesa, and Street Sharks. Within that genre of mutated animals, perhaps the most successful was Biker Mice from Mars. The show followed the mice adventures against their dastardly opponent, Lawrence Lactivius Limburger. And it was the brainchild of president of Marvel Productions at the time, Rick Unger. Although when asked of its parallels to the Turtles, creator Rick Unger replied, That's a terrible question. I wouldn't borrow anything from them. (laughs) So it's settled. This has nothing to do with the Ninja Turtles. Unless you ask director and producer Tom Tataranowitz. What my approach was at how to, how to differentiate uh, biker mice from turtles when we started the show. You know, that was, so, that was sort of my major concern because obviously, as I think Rick would say at the heart of it, you know, he, turtles was sort of the launching point. They were popular and he wanted to come up with something kind of like that. Yeah, what he said, um, I mean, I don't know what was kicking around his head before this, but he said he went to a Dodger game one night. And he was Los Angeles Dodgers, and he was watching, and some kid put a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle toy on a dugout, and the whole crowd went crazy. And Rick says he looked at it and go, huh, I should do something like that. I should come up with some, some concept like that. And so he, he credits that for being sort of the, the genesis of biker mice in his mind. That's what he told me. Whatever the case of its murky origins, this is the story of biker mice from Mars. Creator, Rick Unger. Uh, Kind of strangely, to tell you the truth, I had actually been an attorney representing people who were writers and actors and stuff like that. And I had gotten involved in the licensing business. And it was actually Biker Mice that kind of got me there. I had this ridiculous idea and everything kind of timed out correctly. In the meantime, a friend of mine was kind of the number two guy at New World Television and they owned Marvel Animation. So just some strange things happen, and the next thing you knew is I was running the animation company. At the time, Rick Unger was known for saying the inspiration for the show came to him at a brunch with his wife, when 25 yuppies in Harleys rode up, which got his creative juices flowing. However, years later, he admits to a less PG version of that same inspiration. Every time I was asked that question during the Biker Mice era, I would have to answer it differently because I couldn't tell the truth. But the truth is, it was basically three joints in the middle of Lake Arrowhead at midnight. It's actually that coupled with something that had happened the weekend before. I was actually, okay, so you know Junior's Deli over in the valley, right? I'm sitting there on on a Sunday morning with my wife and some friends having brunch, and I see this motorcycle gang pulling in. I'm like, what's what's a motorcycle gang doing at Junior's? So they take off their helmets, and I go, oh, wait, these are all yuppies riding their motorcycles. And I thought, motorcycles? Little boys would love that as a toy. So I called a friend of mine over at Mattel. I said, what was the last motorcycle toy? Excuse me. He calls me back and he says, Evil Knievel. I went, oh, yeah, Evil Knievel stunt jumper. He said, yeah. He said, it's sold huge. So I knew I wanted to come up with something that would have motorcycles as the base for it because I knew that would sell a lot of toys. Because I had been working on biker mice, you know, a good year or two before I even got to Marvel. But once I got there, all of a sudden I had these terrific artists and, and producers, people like Tom Tataranowitz and all the great Marvel artists. They, you know, suddenly I had what I had never had before. I had just had me and I can't draw anything. So, you know, that made a huge difference. And I was fortunate, you know, there were people there who really got what I was up to and uh, made it a whole lot better. Director, Tom Tataranowitz. Then there became a big shakeup at, at, at Marvel. Rick was brought in, I think partially with a mandate to cut overhead, or in a large part because they had a lot of overhead. 
So he came in there and he was cutting it to the bone. All kinds of people were being laid off. I think Marvel decided they were, they were spending too much money and not getting enough returns return for it because at the time they never wanted to do their superhero shows. It just seemed like they couldn't get that going for some reason. And so Rick came in, and because I was there finishing up Little Shop and working on Magic Paintbrush, I was kind of like last producer standing. I was like the only one he had there. So I got a call on a Friday, and he said, okay, we're going to have a meeting tomorrow. Uh, he wants to have a meeting tomorrow, and we have to do a short promo film for Biker Mice, and I want you to come to it. And then this other producer would come in, too, and we'd talk about it, try to figure out what to do. And that was kind of my first thing about Biker Mice. I reacted probably like everybody first did when they first heard of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Like, what the hell is that? You know, at that time, those weird titles were not usual. So it's like, well, what is that? Biker Mice from Mars, you know, give me a break. What the hell is that? And so I looked at some of the designs that had been done already, some of which were the early ones were actually more rat think than anything else. I said, well, what do you have well, what that I can prepare for tomorrow? And uh, he said, well, we have a, this composer, Will Anderson, had done a one-minute or so um, music track, just Biker Mice theme. That became the main title for the, first, for the first series. And I said, well, let me have that. And I did what I always do when I had to conceptualize something. I took the cassette, because that's what you had then, put it in my car, and just drove around Los Angeles for hours listening to the music, trying to conjure up images that suited the music. And I came up with what was practically shot for shot, the Biker Mice main title. You know, I said, and so I went there, and the other producer was late, and I pitched to Rick. He loved it. The other producer came in, and he loved it. And so then I became the co-producer on the show, and the show was given to me to, to start putting it, developing it from there. When I, when I first got it, I was saying, well, I think what we have to do with this to make it different than Turtles, because Turtles was relatively serious. They gave attempts at humor, but uh, let's be honest, Turtles was never a funny show. And I said, well, I think we should do like a comedy show. We should make a, com a comedy action, a lot of wise guy stuff, a lot of fast action, a lot of everything like that, and do it with what I referred to back then as MTV cutting. That main title I pitched that I pitched that got me the gig. We did that. And when I first did it, I got all kinds of grief from everybody that it was too fast. Kids wouldn't be able to see it. it too many scenes, too quickly cut. I said, no, you, you know, you got to look at what kids are watching on TV these days, like MTV, all this stuff. When we were young, if we had watched those shows, we would have been dribbling idiots. We wouldn't be able to comprehend anything. Nowadays, they pick up everything instantly. And so this show has to be like a rock and roll kind of show, fast cut, lots of action, humor. I think that's what it has to be. And Rick went along with what I was thinking. There were preliminary designs at that point that had been done by a group of guys. I think the names were Phil Felix, excuse me, Gary Montabano, and uh, Richie Chavez. And they, they had done designs of the characters that looked relatively close to the characters. But I also felt we had to add something else to the equation. For instance, on Vinny, I said, well, we, we should do something because, okay, Moto has a, a, this artificial arm. Throttle's got sunglasses, and what I think I'd like to do with that is let's push it that he's really blind. Let's just do that so he needs these glasses for something. And for Vinny, let's destroy half his face and give him a metal mask over half of his face to make him just a little different so he's sort of like a flawed or marred hero. And then I, then I think they tried like a full mask, and I said, well, no, let's do half a mask because I can get some acting. If I have a full face mask, a metal mask, I can't really do much with that. I can't show emotion. There's nothing to be done with it. I could save money on doing lip sync, I guess, but that doesn't really matter. And so we started forming it like that And uh, as far as the visual look. And then those guys left because they were essentially, I think, just freelancers to help Rick with the show at the time. And I brought in a guy that I'd worked with at Filmation, a writer named Bob Forward, who was a very good writer. And he had that sensibility of, of a, a, a nice sense of humor and could write really good action. And he and I had worked on a lot of things together. At Filmation, we worked on the Brave Star feature I did. I directed together, did all kinds of, all kinds of stories about that. But um, and so he came in, and, he, and with him, we nailed the first script. It was really good. Uh, it, Rick really liked it anyway. You know, it was funny. It had action. The characters were fully developed. We decided to push... Limburger in, in a certain way and start really refining the characters and putting a, uh, a really nice point to what they were all about. So that was sort of the, the genesis of that or the 
germination of that. It is interesting. It uh, it came out the same year that Power Rangers came out, so it found itself. It was it was interesting in the United States. Uh, you know, I remember they were really having trouble keeping Power Rangers toys in the stores. It was so popular. So what would happen is, you know, a kid might come in for a Power Rangers, uh, and if it wasn't there, they'd be buying a Biker Mice. You know, those were the two toys that were selling. Overseas, however, Biker Mice was just rocking. So, you know, I did something that turned out to be smart. You know, typically in those days, an animation show would start in the United States, and if it succeeded, it would go over to overseas markets. I didn't do it that way. I actually made sure that we got the show out in world markets at the same time. So that was really useful. And, and, you know, countries like England, countries like France, I mean, Scandinavian countries, biker mice just rocked. So it was actually, at the end of the day, a bigger show overseas than it was in the United States, although it did just fine in the United States. My understanding was it was the number one show in syndication when it first came out. And then we got an order for uh, uh, 13 more, and, um, and it, it did really well. And the merchandising was selling extremely well. It was a very, very successful uh, merchandising line. And uh, and then we got to go ahead to do 65 total, which meant doing like, oh, 40 more, 39 more. As we were doing that, it was doing great. It was very popular. Um, you'd hear about it on the radio, like just jockeys be talking about. It was kind of out in the ether a little bit, which is sort of how things were back then. And then um, and then uh, uh, Morphin, Rain, what is it? Morphin Rangers came out, and everything died, literally everything died. That's all kids wanted to watch was that show. And so as we were finishing up the 65 Biker Mice, the ratings weren't what they used to be. We finished it, but I think that was kind of the end of it there. Just the whole experience of it. Um, I don't think I had ever worked so hard on something. In fact, I know I had. And I'm not sure I've ever worked as hard on something since. When you do a project like that, you basically think of four silly words, Biker Mice from Mars. And you want to take those four silly words that you have in your head and turn it into a worldwide business, that takes some doing. And, man, it owned me for a number of years. It took so much energy. I don't think I've ever recovered all of the energy I had before that. But it was worth every bit of it. It was just great. Um, you know, I always feel for people who put that same amount of energy into a project and it doesn't go well. You know, oh, my goodness, what a terrible thing to have to invest so much of yourself and then not have it succeed to some level. So I was really lucky that that happened. Uh, in terms of memories that you have, gosh, first time I, you know, I used to go hang out at Toys R Us to see how kids were going to react. I think they thought I was a little bit weird. Uh, first time I saw a kid take, take a biker mice toy off the shelf, I about died. It was so awesome. Okay, Rick and I, the show was real popular, and we went to a Special Olympics event at UCLA and to sign things. You know, it was a charity event. You know, Schwarzenegger's there doing his thing because he was involved with Special Olympics, and they were right next to us. And so we're signing posters, and all these developmentally challenged, uh, um, I call them kids. They were adults, but my brother has Down syndrome. And you just never stop referring to them as kids for some reason. Um, or I don't. They were there, and they really loved biker mice. They really, truly did. And, I, and so I'm saying stuff, and I, I'm talking to them. I go, so what do you like about this show so much? Why is this so and, – and then a couple of them said essentially, well, that's because they're like us. And I go, they're like you. Uh, what do you mean they're like you? And he goes, there's something wrong with each of them. They're not perfect. Like I know there's, I'm not perfect. And I go – and they go, yeah. They said, well, like, you know, Vinny, he has a, a, a damaged face and throttles blind. And Moto has an arm that's missing and a fake eye. And so they're not perfect. They're, they're like me. There's something wrong with them. And that was really, that really hit home with me. I thought that was, it, it's not like we had actually planned it to do that. We did it more to be interesting. But it really resonated with a group of people. We had a responsibility that we were honoring that we weren't even aware of. 